What's up guys, JC here, and this is my year in review for the Flip32 Omnibus Flight Controllers. And really I'll be talking about all four different ones. As always, look in the top right of your screen or description below for other uh, helpful videos as well as other reviews. So when I say I'm going to be talking about all of them, I mean we have the Omnibus F3, then there is the Omnibus F3 Pro, then the Omnibus F4, and then F4 Pro. Uh, so I have like the bottom of the spectrum and the top of the spectrum. Well, I shouldn't say that uh, because personally I'm not too crazy about the F4 Pro. So as of right now of me recording this, uh, the Omnibus F3 originally was $40, but now it's down to $23, which is amazing. Especially considering all the features you get, which I will talk about in just a second. And uh, it goes all the way up to the uh, F4 Pro is now selling for $43. Personally, my favorite is going to be the F4 Non-Pro, uh, and right now it's selling for $37. So as you probably picked up on, you can get these anywhere from an F3 to an F4 processor. All of them come with a 1.5 amp voltage regulator built in, and they can all accept up to a 4S LiPo battery. All of them have a virtual COM port as well. What this means is, uh, with a virtual COM port, unlike the flag controllers that use the CP2102 drivers, uh, those boards, UART number one is always shared with the USB, meaning if you have a device on UART one, you have to disconnect it before you go into beta flight or clean flight, because if you try to do that, the device and uh, your computer will be trying to talk to the flag controller at the same time and that causes problems in beta flight and clean flight like uh, the system locking up or just randomly booting you out sometimes your settings don't save uh, just a bunch of problems point is with all of these flight controllers uh, you don't have to worry about that because of the virtual com port they all also use SPI and if you don't know SPI is much faster than I squared C uh, with SPI you can use all of the latest and greatest ESC's uh, one shot 42, multi shot, and even D shot, where flight controllers that use the I squared C form of communication are limited on. Uh, they can still use all the different ESCs, but uh, your PID loop frequency will depend on. It comes down to what flight controller you are using and uh, whether or not it has SPI or not. So. Uh, once again, point is, with SPI on these boards, uh, you can use any ESC you want, and you can use the full 8 kilohertz gyro update and PID loop frequencies. On all the Omnibus boards, they, all these sensors are tied in through the MPU 6000. Uh, they have dedicated LED pins. The biggest feature of all of them is the built-in on-screen display, and if you factor in the price of the boards are already pretty cheap, especially this one at $23, but I mean even if you buy a $15 on-screen display and you subtract that from the $23, I mean theoretically and technically you paid $8 for the board if you're going to use an on-screen display either way. Not only do they have the built-in on-screen displays, but they don't use separate firmware like the MW OSD or anything like that. In the new Betaflight configurator, there is, I'm sure you've seen the OSD tab, where you can extremely easily set up your on-screen display. Uh, on these boards, you will just run your camera video wire in and video transmitter video wire in on these two pins. Uh, now the pin out is different depending on which board you have, but either way it's going to be these two pins. And Betaflight basically does everything for you. There's no more flashing firmware or anything crazy like that don't have to use the MWOSD GUI, none of that. Now these boards do not accept PWM receivers, so if you do have a PWM receiver, you will have to uh, either purchase something else or think about getting a different flight controller. Now they do accept everything else. You can run SBUS on this pin, as well as uh, PPM receivers use the same pin as well. If you have a Spectrum satellite receiver, you can use this plastic JST connector here. The F3 boards have eight output channels, meaning you can use up to an octocopter, where the F4 boards have six uh, output pins. Like I already mentioned, uh, they all have three UART ports, but uh, they none of them have a soft serial port. 
What this means is you'll be limited to three devices. So for example, that could be a SBUS receiver with telemetry and uh, one other device like, uh, like GPS or something like that. But that's really not that big of a deal because the built-in on-screen display actually doesn't require one of the UART ports. So technically, you can have four devices if you count the on-screen display. In the past, we've seen flight controllers with two megabytes of internal flash memory, uh, some with 16 megabytes, some with 32, and I've seen a couple with 64. But these have the built-in SD card reader, uh, which you can use for black box logging, and you can have up to 32 gigabytes of uh, storage for your black box logging. The other good thing about this is there are other boards that have SPI and can run the 8 kilohertz gyro update frequency as well as uh, PID loop frequency, but they don't have the SD card reader and the onboard flash memory can't keep up at those rates and you run into problems. But you don't have to worry about that with the Omnibus. Much like many other flight controllers nowadays, whenever you plug in the USB cable, it does provide 5 volts to the 5 volt pins, uh, which is definitely a good thing for your receiver, meaning you can go into beta flight or clean flight and uh, set up your receiver or even test it. You can create your channels and test those. Anything receiver related, uh, you can do with only power coming from the USB. This means that you don't have to plug in a LiPo battery just to test all of those out, which isn't that big of a deal, but it's kind of a pet peeve of mine that drives me crazy. And just recently, uh, well I should say you can use these on beta flight or clean flight, but as of right now, clean flight does not have the support for the uh, built-in on-screen display, where beta flight does. So if you use these, I would highly recommend using beta flight if you do want to utilize that on-screen display. Uh, but to add to this, iNav just recently added in firmware for the F3 and F4 Omnibus. So if you do plan on using these for a GPS build, uh, the firmware is in iNav and ready to go. Uh, just a side note, if you don't know, iNav is basically the same thing as Clean Flight and Beta Flight. It's just, it revolves more around GPS. So there's more GPS functions and capabilities, settings, stuff like that. As far as the quality, I have had zero problems out of any of my Omnibus flight controllers. I love the F3 so much when it first came out that I actually put this on all, well I can't say all, on the majority of my multi-rotors. Uh, now with the recent release of the F4 Omnibus, uh, like this one, I will be putting that on a few of them just to test it out. I'm a firm believer that One Shot 125 is still great. Uh, I know in the past year we've had one shot 125, one shot 42, multi shot and now D shot. Uh, but I am still happy with one shot 125. But the point I'm trying to make is I'm not really into like I haven't bought into the whole the best is the best thing yet. Uh, so I really don't think we have fully reached the potential of F3 processors yet. So I honestly think a F4 is a little overkill. Now I will also add to that that better is better. No matter which way you slice it, better is better. Even if it's by, you know, I'll use a Vin Diesel reference. If you win by an inch or a mile, winning is winning. So even if this is slightly better, it's better. I'm saying there's nothing wrong with F3 boards. I, I absolutely love it. And you can still get the full 8 kilohertz gyro frequency and pit loop frequencies with the F3 Omnibus. Now just to add to the specs that I just gave you, some personal things I've noticed. With the F4 boards, they don't have the uh, hardware inverters in the circuitry that you need for like free sky receivers. Uh, their SBUS and telemetry signals are inverted. It's a long story, but basically it, it will work for your SBUS signals, but uh, for telemetry, if you've watched my videos on how to connect FreeSky receivers, there is a modification you have to do to your receiver to uninvert the signal, and that can be uh, a, a pain. Where with the F3 Omnibus, you don't have to do that. Everything just works flawlessly. No modifications needed. Now, if you use receivers other than the FreeSky brand, uh, I don't know if those signals are inverted or not. If they are not inverted, then they should work with the F4 Omnibus just fine. But other than the FreeSky receiver problems on the F4 boards, 
I have no complaints from either one of these boards. Uh, so just to compare it, we have the SP Racing Evo for $35, where this is $23, but this can do everything that Evo can do and more, except for the race transponder. But besides the race transponder, uh, the Evo does not have a built-in voltage regulator. It doesn't have a built-in on-screen display. That alone makes the F3 Omnibus win right there at $23. So we're talking $12 less for more features plus a built-in you know, on-screen display that could cost you you know, about 15 bucks. The SP Racing Mini still sells for $50, but it uses I squared C instead of SPI, so it already loses to both of these, even the F3. But hell, you can get the F4 for $37 or the F4 Pro for $43, and you're still getting way more capability than the SP Racing Mini for $50. The X-Racer F303 version 3.1 sells for $30, so $7 more than this F3 Omnibus, but it doesn't have the SD card reader, which like I said before, with SPI and logging at 8 kilohertz gyro update and P loop frequencies, that's going to cause problems. Not only that, but you're paying more money for something that doesn't have a voltage regulator or on-screen display. Then the Dodo, still selling for $40 and it doesn't even have VCP. It's still using the CP2102 driver and I squared C. Yeah, it does have a built-in voltage regulator, but with I squared C and the CP2102, you're talking a, a max gyro update frequency of four kilohertz and probably two on the PID loop frequency, where you can get eight and eight even on the F3, and the F4 is even more capable. And both of these are cheaper than this. Well, actually, these two are about the same price. And only 2 megabytes of internal flash memory. What are you going to do with that? That's going to do it, guys. That's my review for the Omnibus Fly Controllers. Uh, check out the links that I left you for many how-to videos on completely setting these up. And I will see you there.